Hey everyone, you might have seen that I did a hands-on video with the Tamron 150 to 600 a couple of weeks ago at CP Plus. There were a couple of issues with that. One, you don't use a lens like that in that kind of an indoor situation as it is. It's more of a sports lens and to use at the long end for bird watching and that kind of thing. And the second thing is, because it's 6.3 at the long end, a lot of those sample shots I took were up around 6400 ISO and above. So I wanted to get it back in and do some outdoor and studio controlled light testing to really run it through its paces. So we've come out to the park to film some shots to see how this tracks, how good is the focus. And instead of like tracking a, a fast moving football team or something, I'm just going to chase Jade. Well, I'm not going to chase her. I'm going to stand still and see how quick her moves are. I've seen her moves on the dance floor and she can move pretty quick, but we'll see if she can evade this guy. And it's also a horrible day, actually. It's dripping with rain, so it'll be a nice little weather sealing test for this guy too. So I'm going to throw this on my 1DX and let's see how it goes. Let's see how you go. And okay, so autofocus, VC on, full autofocus range. And we're gonna put it on high speed burst and servo autofocus. Are you excited? Are you ready? Oh my god! Woo! Let's okay, do this. bit much. Run, run, run. Okay, let's see how it goes. So obviously this is not the biggest challenge for a lens like this, something moving in a straight line away from you. It can be a challenge for some lenses, but it wasn't for this one. So of course we did mix it up and do left to right in all kinds of different tests. Okay, go to your right or left, go that way and then run across ways and, or run in a diagonal towards me. Let's see how it tracks you. Run like a crazy person. Fast, fast, fast. The only problem is at 600, it's too long. Even from here, it only just gets her little frame in the shot. Look, I gotta say, it's uh, surprisingly quick to focus. Who likes short shots? Everyone likes short shots. Stretch it out. Gosh, I'm actually feeling pretty chilly. I might wear this myself. Ah, that's better. I'm much warmer now. Look at me. Hold it. That's beautiful. That's really nice. Run away as fast as you can. Let's see how it tracks it. Fast as you can, come on. So let's just remind just how long this thing is. There we are at 150 and at 600. Oh, a bird, two birds. Where's that other bird? I've lost her. That's a problem at 600, you can lose subjects. Where's she gone? Oh, bloody hell. She's quick. I lost you. But yeah, the servo tracking on the 1DX is certainly doing fine with this. Having the, the good yellow is... What are you, Usain Bolt or something? Is certainly a nice added touch. Run straight at me this time, let's see how it goes at that. If, you, if you're not too buggered. Yeah. Oh, you're right there. Oh, gracious. <laughs> uh, yeah, the last couple were slightly out of focus, but you were a bit low. But, oh, dang, it did fairly well, it seems. Let's take a look. Let me just change cards. You can um, say hi to everyone. Oh, they can't hear you. But say hi anyway. <laughs> hi, my name's Jane. So we ran through and got a bunch more shots ran through. She ran around and I took a bunch more shots. And I have to say the focus was really good. Uh, the color coming from it was just fine. I didn't do too much in the way of correction to these. Of course, this is shooting on the 1DX. So the fact that it was able to track so well has a whole lot to do with it. But it does suggest that with the high-end body, the slower maximum aperture is not a huge deal. Okay, so back in the studio now, you've seen the resulting images. 
I think probably the rain didn't help too much in terms of tracking, but I was surprised how quickly it was able to grab focus. So even if you've got a camera that doesn't track that well, it got focus really quickly to start your bursts off anyway. But let's do some more image quality tests under controlled lighting here with studio lights and we'll compare it to the 70 to 200 from Tamron as well. So we'll start out doing some shots here at 150 and then 200. 150. There's nerves. So these shots were taken fairly close to her in terms of distance at 150 mil and then at 200 mil around 5.6 to f8. Remembering that 5.6 on this guy is wide open. Next, I headed all the way back in my studio with the really long lens, that at 150, and then took a range of different focal lengths. Now, this is not how I would actually like to shoot in studio. Shooting at four or 500 mil is not ideal in terms of building rapport with your subject, but it does show you the flexibility you have in kind of the, the range of shots you can get from a full body through to an extreme close-up. Okay, let's compare the image quality to the 70 to 200. Again, at 150 and 200, same basic settings. Here I'm using the DF, also a 16 megapixel sensor, so not too far off the 1DX. You might have seen in those early shots I had Jade hold the color checker. That's so I could balance out the color differences between the DF and the 1DX more than the two lenses. I didn't notice a big different color cast between the lenses. But the 70 to 200, I've tested this extensively before. I'll put a link in the caption to all the testing I did comparing it to the Nikon and Canon. It's a fantastic lens and it is incredibly sharp. It gives beautiful skin tones. Um, I, I own one. Here it is, there's 100% crop on the 70 to 200. So this is not, you know, just comparing Tamron to Tamron for the sake of it. The Tamron 70 to 200 is a real quality lens. That said, let's take a look at the 150 to 600 full crop. As these two 100% crop show, it's it's nice. It's sharp. It is a you know a crisp lens. I think you would be surprised at how the results are, considering this is more of an outdoor sports type lens that you do get quite good results off it. But comparing it again to the 70 to 200, it does have more micro contrast and I think overall a bit better detail. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Okay, so having spent a good week with the 150 to 600, I've now sent it back. I have to say it did impress me looking at you know the image quality you're getting and what's coming in at really quite a reasonable price it's cheaper than the 70 to 200 from tamron and you know it's a specialist lens it's big there's lots of glass in there and the quality that's coming off it is good the handling is just fine um i would say it's not quite at the build quality of the 70 to 200 probably around the same as the 24 to 70 from tamron which is to say uh, fine to good, uh, just not exceptional like the highest quality one from Tamron or the Nikon and Canon equivalents. But for the price, it's really hard to beat. Handling, as I say, I felt it was fine. It, it is a big heavy lens in the, you know, I was only doing half hour bursts of testing here and there, I handheld it all. If you're doing full days, no doubt you would want to consider using a monopod. Look, it's quite simple if this lens is for you or not. There's two tests that you need to take in mind. Do you need a big range like 150 to 600 or would something with a shorter end for the long end like that only zooms to 400 be better or would something that's you know not as big of a range 150 to 600 would be okay like a 200 to 400 or something that doesn't start as wide but goes quite long. That's what you need to consider. And the second thing is, is that variable aperture range going to do it for you? As you saw in some of those test shots, you still can blur the background quite nicely, but not like you can at f4 or 2.8. That said, if you're talking about a 400 or 600 mil lens at f2.8 or f4, you're talking serious money, possibly five figures for some of those lenses. Whereas this one's, you know, one and a bit. So, for what you're getting, I think it's exceptional value. It absolutely is not going to be for everyone. It's not something I would consider adding to my bag. It was fun to play with, but it doesn't suit my workflow at all. Um, but if you wanna get into you know, a really long zoom range because you're shooting birds or sport or this or that, and you've got a body that's going to be able to focus okay with that lower amount of light coming in because of the variable aperture, and the camera's got good tracking and all of those kind of things, I think the image quality coming off it for the money, you really can't complain about that. Thanks to Jade for coming along and helping out with that one. You're gonna see a lot more of her on the channel. Feel free to leave her a comment saying hi in the caption below. Thanks, I'll see you soon.